Hello and welcome to the second video in the Apply series of R Labs tutorials. In this short video, we will talk about the LApply and SApply functions. LApply is fairly similar to Apply. We still have to specify an object, and in this case, the object can be a list, a data frame, or a vector. And then we indicate the function that we want to be applied to each element of the object. And just like for the apply function, we can also specify additional arguments specific to the function that is being applied. Now, one of the big differences between lapply and apply, though, is that lapply returns only lists. So let's look at a few quick examples here. So here's a data set in the format of a list. And again, I just made this data up, but let's pretend that we are looking at the clutch sizes of Canada geese under four different diet regimes, with 10 replicates in each diet group. Now we might be interested in taking the average clutch size associated with each diet, and we can use lapply to do so. We simply indicate the name of the list, kego.list, and kego stands for Canada geese, by the way. And then we indicate the name of the function we wish to apply, in this case, mean. And this function will be applied to every element of the Kago list. In this case, every element of the list is a different vector. And you can see that we get the respective means returned in the form of a list. Now instead of storing our information in a list like we did with the Kago.list object, we might have the data stored within a data frame, like this. And we can write the exact same lapply command. And this time for a data frame, lapply applies the function to each of the variables, each of the columns. So we certainly could use the apply function here, but the main difference is that with lapply, we don't have to specify a margin. It is assumed that we are working with columns. And then obviously the output is always a list when we use lapply, not a simple vector. Now I did mention before that lapply can also work on just a simple vector as well, so let's just make a random vector to demonstrate. So here is a vector called random, and we've actually made a character string for a change. So there it is. And then we can determine the number of letters in each of the words contained within our vector using the ncare function within lapply. And there we go. So the object is the random vector, and we want to apply the ncare function to each element of the vector. So the first element of the random vector is the word this, and we get four as the associated output because the word this has four letters, or four characters. Now we could have just as easily input the random vector into the ncare function directly. And you can see that we get the exact same answer, except for the fact that lapply returns the output in the form of a list rather than a vector. Okay, now the next member of the apply family, sapply, is essentially identical to lapply. We write the word sapply, we can input a list, a data frame, or a vector as an object, and then we specify a function, and we can have additional arguments. Now the difference is that the output is simplified if possible. In other words, the output will be returned as a vector or a matrix instead of a list if it is possible to simplify the output in this way. So let's look at the same examples that we used with lapply, and now we'll use sapply instead to compare. So we'll start with our kego.list, and now we can say sapply kego.list mean. And so this time the answers are returned in the form of a vector, not a list. And we can do the same thing for our data frame, kego.df, and we get the same thing. Now in this case, there is absolutely no difference between this output and the output that we would get using apply on this data frame. Again, the only difference is that with sapply, we do not have to specify a margin. The function can be applied to the various columns, not the rows, whereas we would have the chance to choose the desired margin within the apply function. And we can also use sapply on our vector. So here is the random vector, and we can execute this command sapply, random, and care. And there we have a nice vector-based output with the actual elements written as headings above the associated output. Now you might be wondering when you would get an output that could not be simplified to a vector or a matrix. Well, here's an example. We're going to make our own function called sequence. 
and the output is going to be sec ncare x. So we know that the ncare function determines the number of characters present in an output. So for example, the number of letters in a word. And this sec function returns a sequence that starts at 1 and ends at the number specified within the brackets. So for example, sec3 returns a sequence of numbers from 1 to 3. So this entire expression, sec and care x, will return a sequence that is the length of the number of characters in an input. And so here's what happens when we apply this sequence function to the random vector. We get a list returned. For the element called this within the vector, we get the sequence 1, 2, 3, 4 returned, because there are four letters in the word this. Then for is, we get 1, 2 returned because there are two letters, two characters in the word is, and so on and so forth. And all our sequences are part of the output, but they are different lengths, so R cannot coerce them into a nice matrix. It cannot simplify. So we get a list, just like we would have with L apply. Thanks for listening to this R Labs tutorial video. If you found this useful, you might be interested in our free online Moodle course, or check out and subscribe to our YouTube channel.